Good afternoon. This is Akash Mani and I'm Anuja Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaches Kazan in Russia to attend BRICS summit to hold bilateral talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin this evening. India values close cooperation within BRICS as it emerged as an important platform for dialogue and discussion, says Prime Minister Modi. Notification for second phase of assembly elections in Jharkhand and single phase in Maharashtra issued today. President Draupadi Murmu confers fifth National Water Rewards 2023. Odisha bags first prize in state category. New Delhi dispatches first tranche of 30 tons humanitarian assistance to war-torn country Palestine. India's growth story remains intact. Real GDP likely to grow at 7.2% for financial year 2024-25, says RBI Governor Shaktikant Das. And IMD says depression forms over East Central Bay of Bengal, likely to hit Odisha coast as a severe cyclonic storm on Thursday night. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived on a two-day visit to Russia to attend the 16th Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa BRICS summit in Kazan beginning tomorrow. The summit is themed on strengthening multilateralism for just global development and security. Speaking to Akashwani correspondent in Kazan, India's ambassador to Russia, Vinay Kumar said, the summit will provide an important platform for leaders to discuss key global issues. It will also assess the progress of initiatives launched by BRICS. <laughs> Mr. Kumar said, Prime Minister Modi will hold bilateral meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Let's go live to our correspondent Nasim Nakwi who is covering the prime minister's visit. Nasim, how is the atmosphere in Kazan as Prime Minister Narendra Modi has arrived to attend the BRICS summit? Uh, prime Minister uh, arrived uh, to a very very warm welcome and uh, all the students uh, from Kazan and uh, and uh, from Russia uh, they have come to Kazan to to have a glimpse of uh, Prime Minister Mr. Modi and uh, Prime Minister Modi there was a performance of uh, Indo-Russian fusion dance by local artists on Bollywood songs as you know uh, Bollywood is very very popular everywhere so is our prime minister so it was a perfect uh, combination and the students are very excited the local people are also very excited to uh, see and uh, meet Mr. Modi Nasim uh, Prime Minister Modi is also scheduled to hold talks with uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin this evening how do you view the talks between the two leaders uh, it's a very very important meeting uh, 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 this is the second uh, meeting he'll be holding with uh, Russian president uh, uh, Mr Putin uh, India and Russia uh, uh, have entered 30 or uh, 70 50 years of its uh, relationship diplomatic relationship So we about we talk about the agenda. Then when two leaders meet, two leaders of big countries they meet. The entire gamut of things they come uh, uh, under discussion. So uh, it's like that. And uh, because we are cooperating, uh, India and Russia they are cooperating in almost every field. Be it nuclear energy, be it food security, be it uh, people to people uh, relationship, everything. Right. Thank you, Nasim. Earlier in his departure statement Mr Modi said that India values the close cooperation within BRICS which has emerged as an important platform for dialogue and discussion on issues concerning the global developmental agenda reformed multilateralism climate change economic cooperation building resilient supply chains promoting cultural and people to people connect among others he added the expansion of BRICS with the addition of new members last year has added to its inclusivity and agenda for the global good the no- notification for the second phase of assembly elections in jharkhand and single phase election in maharashtra has been issued voting will be held on 20th of next month nominations can be filed till 29th of november scrutiny of nominations will be done on 30th of this month last date for withdrawal of candidature is 1st november in jharkhand and 4th november in maharashtra
In Jharkhand, 38 constituencies will go to polls in this phase, while in Maharashtra, polling will take place for all 288 assembly seats. Meanwhile, nomination filing for the first phase in Jharkhand is picking up momentum. So far, 25 candidates have filed their nominations. Polling for this phase will be held on 13th of November. Counting of votes will be taken up on 23rd November. In Kerala, campaigning is in full swing in the Vainard Lok Sabha constituency and also in the two assembly constituencies of Chellakara Reserved and Palakkad, where bipoles are scheduled to take place on the 13th of next month. Congress candidate Priyanka Gandhi, who is contesting from Vainard, will file her nomination papers from the constituency tomorrow. NDA's Navya Haridas and LDF candidate Satyan Mokeri will file their nomination papers on Thursday. President Draupadi Murmu conferred the 5th National Water Awards 2023 in New Delhi today. The awards were presented to 38 winners in nine categories. This includes Best State, Best District, Best Village Panchayat, Best Urban Local Body, Best Water User Association and Best Civil Society. Speaking on the occasion, President Murmu said, the government has provided tap water connections to over 78% rural households across the country under the Jalji mission. The president said when the mission was launched in 2019, only 17% rural households had access to safe water. In 2019, the government has been launched in 2019. The government has been launched in 2019. The government has been launched in 2019. The water आज 78 प्रतिशत से अधिक परिवारों के पास नल से जल पहुंचा दिया गया है. Our correspondent reports that in the category of Best State, the first prize has been conferred upon Odisha and second prize to Uttar Pradesh. Gujarat and Puducherry jointly secured the third position. Talking to Akashwani News, additional Chief Secretary, Water Resources of Odisha, Anu Garg, said, Lots of water bodies have been created and water harvesting structures have been set up in the state. We had started for providing drinking water to all the households of UP, rural households. That were almost 30 million in number. We started with some 5 lakh households only. Now we are at 84% of that thing. We have moved quite well in that direction, but at the same time the responsibility and the challenge is that we should make it functional. Union Home and Cooperation Minister Amit Shah today said that India is gearing up for second white revolution aiming to connect all the 8 crore milk producing farmers of the country to the cooperative infrastructure in coming future. Addressing the Diamond Jubilee celebrations of the National Dairy Development Board in Anand today, Mr. Shah said, at present, only 1.5 crore of the milk-producing farmers are connected with the cooperatives, while majority of them are still suffering from exploitation. न केवल उनका सशक्तिकरण किया उनको संगठित किया और अपने हक के लिए जागरूक करने का काम किया Chief of Army Staff General Upendra Dwedi emphasized that restoring trust between India and China is a critical prerequisite for advancing the disengagement process between the two nations. General Dwedi made the remarks during an event in New Delhi today. Commenting on the recent agreement between India and China regarding patrolling arrangements along the line of actual control or LAC in eastern Ladakh, General Dwedi highlighted that the primary objective is to return to the status quo of April 2020 by the two sides. He added that both sides need to reassure and convince each other to move forward with their subsequent phases of disengagement. The stalemate over the issue of resumption of talk between the centre and leaders of Ladakh on four points demands ended with the announcement of the date for dialogue. Union Home Ministry has called the next round of talks of the already constituted high-powered committee under the chairmanship of the Minister of State for Home Affairs, Nitya Rai, on 3rd of December. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our X handle at AIR News Alerts. And for details of stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and News on AIR app. 
India has dispatched the first tranche of assistance comprising 30 tons of medicine and food items today as humanitarian assistance for the people of Palestine. The assistance has been sent through the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for the Palestine refugees in the Near East. In a social media post, external affairs spokesperson Randir Jaswal said, the consignment includes essential medicines and surgical supplies such as dental products, general medical items and high energy biscuits. In view of the deteriorating air quality in Delhi and the NCR region, Stage 2 of the Graded Response Action Plan, GRAP, has been invoked across the national capital region from today. Our correspondent reports that an 11-point action plan will be applicable under Stage 2 of GRAP with immediate effect in the entire NCR. Under the stage 2 of GRAP, mechanical vacuum sweeping and water sprinkling will be carried out at identified roads in Delhi NCR on a daily basis. The agencies will also inspect the construction and demolition sites for strict enforcement of dust control measures. The focused and targeted action for abatement of air pollution will also be done. The agencies will ensure synchronization of traffic movement and deploy adequate personnel at congestion points for smooth flow of traffic. Besides, the committee has also called for increasing the frequency of services in CNG and electric buses and induct an additional feed for the same. Talking to Akashwani News, Head of the Department of Respiratory Medicine in Ram Manohar Lohia Hospital, Dr. Amit Suri highlighted the precautions needed to be taken in view of air pollution. Anavashyak bahar nahi nikle, agar nikalna pad raha hai, to N95 mask ka prayog jiru karge. Aur koi exercise vagara na kare, so unke is SPM hota hai, sabse zyada paya jata hai. Meanwhile, the Delhi government has also appealed to the citizens to turn off their vehicles on roads under the red light on Gadi off campaign. Bhanu Pratap Singh for Akashwani News, Delhi. The severe cyclonic storm Dana is gaining strength in the Bay of Bengal and is heading towards the Odisha coast to make a landfall on the intervening night of this Thursday and Friday. The India Meteorological Department or IMD today released a new possible track of the impending severe cyclonic storm which is likely to hit the Odisha coast near Balasore and Bhadrak or Bhitarkanika in Kendrapada. The IMD has confirmed that the depression formed over East Central Bay of Bengal is about 700 kilometers southeast of Paradeep in Odisha and 750 kilometers south-southeast of Sagar Island in West Bengal. More from our Odisha correspondent. All schools in 14 coastal and neighboring districts will remain closed for three days from tomorrow while all scheduled examinations have also been cancelled. Over 800 multipurpose cyclone shelters equipped with essential facilities like electricity, food and water are being readied in the coastal districts. The state government has asked NDRF, ODRF and fire service personnel to make their positions at all red zone districts predicted by the IMD for evacuation and relief operations. Additionally, the Army, Navy and Coast Guard have assembled rescue and relief teams along with ships and aircraft to assist if needed. Rainfall activity is set to commence from tomorrow with IMD has issued red alert for all the coastal districts from Thursday for two days. Prakash Das, Akashwani News, Bhubaneswar. RBI Governor Shakti Kandas has said that India's growth story remains intact as its fundamental drivers, consumption and investment demand are gaining momentum. In the RBI's monthly bulletin, Mr. Das said that India is likely to see the real GDP growth at 7.2% for the financial year 2024-25. Domestic benchmark indices Sensex and Nifty were trading lower in the afternoon trade, weighed down by widespread selling pressure across sectors. The 30-share BSE Sensex tanked 543 points or 0.6% to 80,608, while NAC Nifty 50 was at 24,584 a short while ago. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaches Kazan in Russia to attend BRICS summit to hold bilateral talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin this evening. India values close cooperation within BRICS as it emerged as an important platform for dialogue and discussion, says Prime Minister Modi. Notification for second phase of assembly elections in Jharkhand and single phase in Maharashtra issued today. President Rabdi Murmu confers 5th National Water Awards 2023, Odisha Bags first prize in state category. New Delhi dispatches first tranche of 30 tons humanitarian assistance to war-torn country Palestine. India's growth story remains intact, real GDP likely to grow at 7.2% for financial year 2024-25, says RBI Governor Shakti Kantas, and IMD says depression forms over East Central Bay of Bengal likely to hit Odisha coast as a severe cyclonic storm on Thursday night.
And with that, we end the Midday News.